institutionalized. So this month, as we remember the role played by women, we are going to be discussing today the role of women in tourism and applaud women for the strides they have made in making sure that they do not relent in pursuing the struggle for not only political emancipation, but for the emancipation of women as women, as South Africans, as workers, as mothers. The struggle for women to make it in the economy is one of the most complex, sophisticated, difficult struggles. The war is not won yet for women to lead in all aspects of our lives, particularly the lives as it relates to the economic situation. So as we celebrate the August month, we want to congratulate women, applaud them, support them, work with them, but most importantly, allow ourselves to be led by women. Because in the leadership of women, there is inheritance of wisdom. Women are the ones who bring us to this planet. When your mother brings you to this planet, she's the first person to help you in your arms. She's the first person to give you the love. That you, the, the entire guide, your life depends on the first type of care you get from a mother when you are born. So the role that women play is indispensable, is beyond measurement, is beyond imagination. That's why it's important for us in all aspects of our lives to always make sure that this role that women play in nurturing society, in building society, in getting into conflict situations and resolving them globally, in making sure that they bring up their children, leading society in the churches, in the societies that are there in the villages and the townships, the building societies, we must make sure that we continue to support women and work with them. And as I said, allow ourselves to be led. I just thought I need to make those opening remarks because we are now going through the pandemic of uh, coronavirus globally. And in South Africa, we are now in level two. But level two, in as far as the suffering of women is concerned, it, it doesn't matter whether it's level five or two or one, the sufferings of women and the challenges they face remain the same. And the corona situation exposed some of the difficulties that we still face in as far as in women emancipation and building a non-sexist South Africa is concerned. We want to pay tribute and our condolences to those who have lost their lives because of the coronavirus. We in this committee, we lost a member, Honorable Comrade Peter, who was representing the ANC in this committee from the Eastern Cape. We lost him because of the coronavirus. So we must continue to be vigilant, to try our best to get all the basics right, and to educate our society that getting into level two or level one doesn't mean that we must no longer be vigilant and adhere to all the important lessons that we got in as far as uh, the coronavirus uh, is concerned. We hope that our society so will behave well play. and not assume that we are now in level two and therefore we can do as we please. We can let our guard down. If we can make that mistake, it's indispensable. It's guaranteed that the coronavirus will emerge again. It's beyond imagination. The percentage of people who are contracting the virus will go up.
you know, all are not as so if that is not enough. We all know we now in level two and level that almost on a daily basis we get reports about play in the extent to which women in building society, if we can are being that harassed, in getting into are being raped, and resolving are being global, isolated, are being making sure that they bring by some members of our society. Living society. So we hope that our society churches, one day can reach a stage where in the society we will be able to say none of us is going to raise either a voice, a hand, a weapon to display our masculinity people who are contracting the virus against the existence and the operations of women, whether they are in that almost private sector, in the public sector. Generally, the extent to be society. We hope that uh, as we pray as a society, we can come together and through mm -hmm. prayer and through practical things that we do, we can stop the carnage that is being unleashed on women. I mean, when you look at what is happening in KZN now, with a possibility of a serial killer existing there, women disappear and they are found dead because of these people who call themselves human beings when they are actually not human beings, but these are cannibals, what, what we don't need in our society. We welcome everybody to this platform of the Tourism Portfolio Committee. We thought that today we must also play our small role in ensuring that uh, we discuss this particular matters of tourism in the context of the role that must be played by women, including broadly in the economy. We have an apology of uh, Honorable Makubela. Certainly, they woke up to the news this morning that her brother succumbed to the virus, and therefore, she will not be able to be part of the, the meeting. Honorable Boltino, do we have additional apologies? Double Tino. Unmute. Okay. That's good. Okay. Can you hear me now, Chair? You are clear. You are clear. You oh, are clear. okay. No, I, I don't have any additional apologies, Chair. I'm sure those members who have not joined, they are still uh, going to join us along the way. No problem. Okay. So we are now handing over to uh, the provincial, the department and the provincial chairperson of the chapter in as far as the uh, women in tourism agenda is concerned to do the introductions. And as soon as the introductions are consent and doing the opening remarks, we can go into the engagement after the presentation that is going to be done. And we are very, very glad that uh, for the first time as a committee, we're engaging in the context of women in as far as tourism is concerned. Over to you, the department and the chairperson. Thank you so much, uh, uh, honorable chairperson and honorable members. Uh, formally, greetings from the Department of Tourism. I was just- <laughs> Hey, it's a nice name. <laughs> it, it, it is. Uh, yeah, it's a I've just been alerted to the G last night sent through a, an apology together with the minister. They will not be joining us. But I want to assure members that you are in the capable hands of mm -hmm. the department and of our beautiful women in, 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 in tourism. Chairperson, thank you so much. Your words are very encouraging to us as women and to the uh, citizens of, of South Africa and of the world at large, because tourism doesn't know boundaries. We are encouraged that uh, we are not alone. Procedures, by you don't. If we can just switch off our phones, uh, 
honorable members and everybody else or put them on silent. Those who are not using their phones to, to connect to the meeting. Asmadi Tonki. Asmadi Tonki. Osmani Tonki, are you there? Is there anyone who can bring to the attention of, of Osmani Tonki that something has happened to her connection? Uh, uh, Chair, I've just uh, allowed her in. She's waiting outside to join. She lost connection. So I see she's busy joining. I don't know if um, Ujeri just can help us with that. Yeah, yes, I. I admitted uh, again, Chair. <clears throat> that is okay. We are also okay. taking this opportunity to welcome South Africans who are joining us in this virtual platform. South Africans who may be using Twitter, Facebook, and all other available platforms to join this important uh, discussion today, where we are dealing with uh, tourism in the context of the role that is supposed to be played by women and the role that is being played by by women if we have osmadi tonki back you can proceed my sister um, my apologies uh, chairperson and honorable don't members. worry it's not it's not your fault i i really do not know what had happened today it's uh, thank not your you. fault, my sister. You know, sometimes we are in aeroplanes, and when it's supposed to land, we are told it must turn back. And you can't yeah. be blamed for, for being late because uh, the, the aeroplane then had to turn back to Port Elizabeth. So it's uh, none of your, it's not by your doing. So we understand. Don't worry. You. Take your thank time you. and proceed, Dawsak. Thank you, thank you, Chairperson. I, 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 I was just saying that we are encouraged by by your words, and um, in, in 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 tourism, my personal perception is that tourism, being a service-dominated sector, really resonates very well with women. The character that women are, that they always uh, display, is a sector that normally makes sure that uh, 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 people are relaxed. People are, are well fed, people are nurtured, and it's all in, 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 in tourism. And by, by doing that, with the ultimate goal of making sure that our community's well being are taken care of by creating jobs and by making sure that economic development happens. That is the role that women always play. I want to allude also to the recovery plan that uh, the, the minister has, has, has published for, for, for comments. Indeed, uh, COVID-19 has sadly impacted on all of us. And our condolences to Honorable Member Makubele for, for the loss. And also, we felt the loss of the member that has recently passed on. In the recovery plan, we will want to see women taking center stage. We will want to see women not only during the month of uh, August, but also playing a very critical role in ensuring that the kind of tourism that we are going to recover uh, 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 after the impact of uh, COVID-19, COVID and also that we are going to live by if really we do not find a cure for, 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 for it, women are not left aside. Women are part of the center stage for recovering tourism and taking tourism to greater heights for the benefit of our country. Chairperson, I'm with Maylene Broderick. Maylene is going to be taking us through to the, 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 the presentation. Thank you so much. Good morning, uh, Honourable Chair, Honourable Members, Acting DDG, colleagues, and of course, all our beautiful chairpersons of our Women in Tourism chapters across South Africa. Um, thank you very much for the, the kind words, um, Chairperson, and as the Acting DDG has indicated, 
um, women have been disproportionately adversely impacted um, by, this by this virus, this pandemic. Um, and from the department's perspective, uh, we intend to do our utmost to support recovery, um, particularly with our uh, a focus and attention on the. Um, in terms of the, the presentation, um, Petra, can I go to the next slide? The areas that we'll be covering is the, the, the background. Um, is it possible to go to full slide, uh, Petra? Because I'm not seeing. In terms of the presentation, I hope uh, Petra will get it back up soon. Um, we'll be taking you through the background, how we uh, got to the Women in Tourism program in South Africa based on the focus of women empowerment in tourism through the United Nations um, World Tourism Organization. Um, then we will be looking at um, the Women in Tourism in South Africa and the institutional arrangements around that, um, the objectives of the Women in Tourism program, what we have been busy with uh, in terms of last year, the national program and the provincial programs, and then the UNWTO pilot. Um, okay, in terms of the UNWTO Women in Tourism in, uh, program, um, there was an initial global report done on women in tourism, and the second edition um, was presented at the regional congress on women empowerment, which was hosted in Ghana in 2019 and attended by the Honorable Minister. Um, the key findings of the report considered how the situation has evolved um, and provided a thorough assessment of tourism's contribution towards the UN uh, SDG Goal 5, which is to achieve gender equality and women's empowerment. In addition, the second edition um, was extended over the uh, geographical scope, covering also developing countries Here's the report presented in Ghana, um, and also did an additional in-depth industry analysis and several case studies that illustrate how women around the world are using tourism as a vehicle for empowerment and development. Slide. The key findings of the report uh, indicated that the majority of the tourism workforce worldwide is female, 54% of people employed in the tourism uh, e economy are, are women, compared to 39% in the broader economy. And from a South African perspective, Chair, in our tourism value chain, over 70% of um, our uh, econo uh, tourism economy are women, and overall um, of the 100% the 100 60% are youth. So I just thought I'd, I'd indicate that. The wage gap is smaller in the tourism industry, Women earn 14.7% less than men compared to over 20% in other areas. Tourism offers women greater opportunities for leadership roles. 23% of tourism ministers are female compared to 20.7% of ministers overall, including our own honorable minister, Mamaluku Kubai Mbogani. More and more women are challenging gender stereotypes in the sector and assuming roles once dominated by men, such as tour guiding, Technology is an important factor for empowerment, providing women with more training opportunities and stimulating female entrepreneurship through easier access to the market. And policymakers are more aware of the importance of gender equality in tourism and putting measures in place to ensure that women equally share in the benefits that tourism brings. Slide. The second edition also adopted an action plan and we were requested as a UNWTO member as well as other policymakers, businesses, um, local and national government co-ops, international organizations and NGOs, that when developing women in tourism programs, uh, there should be six focus areas. One being employment, followed by entrepreneurship, leadership and policy decision-making, education and training, community and civil society, and measurement for better policies. There is the full report is available, um, honorable chair and honorable members uh, from a but it is only available digitally. Slide. Okay, now to the crux of it, our own South African Women in Tourism program. 
The program commenced in 2013 as a platform to drive initiatives and programs that would support the development, empowerment and networking opportunities for women in our sector. The aim is to create a conversation platform for advancing transformation and integration of women uh, from different socioeconomic backgrounds within the sector. Um, and the main focus would include training on personal development, supporting women to develop competitive advantages in their business and provision of capacity building as prioritized by each chapter. In terms of the objectives of the program, it's, they are quite comprehensive and these were adopted in 2013 when we retained them to ensure that women who constitute the majority of the sector, as I indicated, 70% are respected, recognized, represented and awarded to drive transformation in both the tourism and hospitality sectors in terms of our code, to mobilize and create platforms to network, expand business and professional horizons, to facilitate access to business resources, information and opportunities for women in the sector, to identify mechanisms that need to be put in place. And there was a call to, to provide a national structure or vehicle through which women in tourism could be implemented and address the barriers faced by women in the sector and to align with similar organizations to better leverage opportunities for women. Um, continuing on uh, to profile, recognize, affirm, and create platforms to celebrate women in the sector, to highlight problems and challenges faced specifically by women in the sector, to lobby government and other stakeholders on barriers for advancement of women in the sector, to provide leadership and role models for young women endeavoring to enter our space, to find solutions to the social challenges through providing a platform for dialogue and sharing, as well as adding their voice in calling for a non-sexist and equitable industry and to give expression to integration in line with the AU 2063 agenda, granting women equal access to opportunities in all spheres of life. Slide. Okay, in terms of our own uh, institutional arrangements, as I indicated earlier, Chair, the, there was a call for some sort of a national structure. So in 2018-19, we revisited and updated the concept and that was approved. Um, now what has happened, we, the, the women decided was that the province, uh, the department would be uh, a national coordinating structure um, and therefore we would chair and provide the secretariat for a national coordinating committee but the women were quite adamant that they wanted some independence as well and therefore preferred that there would be nine individual chapters, one per province, um, and that um, on a biannual basis, the National Coordinating Committee made up of the department and the nine chairpersons of the provinces would meet. We also requested provincial departments and tourism agencies, um, also at, at local level, and in some provinces it works better than others, um, to provide support to our chapters whether that be in kind, such as office, workspace and training opportunities or budget if, if it was available. Ultimately, we've now set up nine provincial chapters and we had advised that an NPO is the preferred legal structure, which we recommended and most provinces adopted that. We requested that while we were assisting to set up the chapters and the structure and we would continue to support that it should be private sector driven. We also asked the chapters to ensure that students and youth have, uh, are participating um, and that in order to become self-sustaining, we recommended a membership fee to be decided by each chapter. Slide. In terms of our programs, um, Chair and Honourable Members, um, we used to have an annual conference for Women in Empowerment Workshop. Um, in our last one was in January 2019, which was hosted by the Honourable Deputy Minister in Rustenburg in the Northwest. The theme for that uh, tourism empowerment workshop was promoting empowerment and jobs for growth. We held a series of various workshops where we had different presenters and panel discussions. Um, and we reflected on the following areas, accelerating economic empowerment and progression for women in the sector, expanding the role of women in the sector through the vehicle, which is what we call the Women in Tourism Platform, and exploring new and varied business opportunities to advance uh, women entrepreneurs. We had the likes of the South African Navy, South African National Parks uh, come and present there. In terms of the conference uh, resolutions, uh, these are the resolutions that were adopted there. Um, we, there was a call for us to review our TTF and uh, Tourism Incentive Programs. I think the Portfolio Committee has also pronounced on that. 
Um, and I'm sure the, the Women in Tourism will report that uh, quite a few of our members have now benefited from both the TTF and the GTIP program. Um, and this year we plan on implementing an enterprise development program. Uh, we, we, I'll get into the details around that a little earlier, but the key there is to, to help women to develop their own business plans and not always be you know, beholden to consultants who actually develop something and then leave and, and it's not even bankable. To ensure that uh, our own department as well as other government departments and programs uh, focus on women and our three incubators are actually uh, the major beneficiaries in our incubation programs are women at this point. And we also shared the Women in Tourism program um, and in fact, uh, Department of Sports, Arts and Culture and Small Business Development are very supportive of our Women in Tourism program. We also ask members, uh, chapters to, to grow their membership and uh, make sure that women in provinces know about the program. Uh, we must uh, support chapters to become self-sustaining. As I indicated, we have provided support since 2013, uh, but we really want chapters to stand on their own feet. Um, every chapter develops an annual program based on their own um, needs. Um, they have AGMs and then they develop their program of action and, and then they report uh, to us on, on that and require, on how the assistance is required, et cetera. And um, we also ask for and you know, involved provinces and agencies to try and assist these chapters. And for the most part, there's a lot of support from provinces. Uh, the Western Cape is experiencing a, a bit of challenges, but we are trying to resolve that. Slide. Um, in terms of our program, as I indicated last year, we had the conference in Rustenburg. Um, then we uh, host an annual networking dinner. And last year at Indaba, as you know, this year, Indaba was cancelled uh, due to the pandemic. Uh, we had a focus on African cuisine and local produce, as well as crafts, and it went over very, very well. We have uh, nine provincial chapters established. We are experiencing uh, some, uh, some challenges in some of the chapters, and I'll get into that a little bit later. And then we also held nine chapter workshops assisting provinces with uh, capacity building and governance training. Um, the women themselves will speak to the chairpersons, uh, will speak to this, uh, but we did experience some teething problems in the beginning around governance, how to run a chapter, holding AGMs, uh, the roles and responsibilities of the executive, uh, accountability, reporting, etc. So we did try to workshop the women in some of that. We had in the, wanted to do some Institute of Direct of South Africa training, uh, but we weren't able to do that. The other program that focuses on women in the department, uh, honorable members, is the Executive Development Program. Uh, since 2017, 80 women have been trained in the program, 64 of whom have graduated. The intake for last year, uh, 14 would have graduated, but we were unable to hold further graduation ceremonies due to the impact of the virus. And the intake for this year um, has been postponed again because of the pandemic and the selection process is underway. Slide. These are the success stories. There are several, but we've chosen to focus on a few chairperson. Um, and uh, Ms. Lefilwe Siamise started her own company known as the Black Pearls. Um, and she also supported Ms. Fuso Amoa uh, as the sponsor, uh, representing South Africa in the Mrs. World competition. Ms. Petejo Kubeka, as elected as the vice chairperson of the AAXO um, in June 2020, and um, is also the acting operations executive for Synergy Business Events. And they were recently the service provider of uh, South African tourism, and actually two very successful endeavors. Um, Ms. Bongeka Molefi, uh, promoted to the account director for the Marriott Group of Hotels. Ms. Tavan Vili, appointed as group marketing manager for EOH. Uh, previously, she was a brand manager. And Ms. Duduzile Zondo, who is the front office manager now at the Radisson Hotel from being a receptionist at Holiday Inn in Sandton. Um, in terms of other assistance that we give through other programs, um, such as the Tourism Incentive Program uh, of the GTIP, the 45 grants that have been approved to date, 25 have been awarded to women-owned businesses, 12 have been awarded to women-owned businesses that are between 80 to 100 percent owned by women, um, and the B compliance status is there, and where women owned up to 50 percent of the business, 13 were successful, the TTF, 17 grants were approved, eight of which were awarded to women-owned businesses, and those are the statistics um, uh, noted there. Slide. 
In terms of our initiatives, honorable members for this year, uh, pre-COVID, the events that we had to place on hold was obviously the networking uh, cocktail, which we held on an annual basis. We had, uh, through the job summit, um, got approved a national mentorship pilot where we would have uh, put 20 women through a mentorship program for a year in partnership with TBCSA and Saki. Uh, we've had to put that on hold, but hopefully as we move uh, higher in the risk of justice strategy, uh, we plan to start implementing that either in quarter three or quarter four um, with the support of TBC, TBCSA and Saki. Um, we also held a very successful Women in Tourism, a Women in Environment cleanup campaign through the Good Genes program where we partnered with DEF. Um, after the, uh, the portfolio co committee visit to Howick, you remember the state of Howick, so we went uh, to Howick last year and actually did the campaign there. And this year we plan to have cleanup campaigns around tourism areas in Limpopo and Pumalanga in the Eastern Cape, but that we've now put on hold due to the social distancing protocols and meeting uh, numbers, et cetera. Under the APP for this year, we intend on looking at developing the Women in Tourism Enterprise Development Program, where we hope to benefit up to 25 women per province in a one year long enterprise development program. And the top five candidates from each province will then be put on a mentorship program for one year. And the outcome of that is to develop, we will team them to develop their own business plan, be the expansion or sustainability or just, um, you know, coming out of this COVID uh, pandemic. How do they sustain their businesses to be able to enable them to apply for finance to either DFI or commercial banks as well. And then, of course, the UNWTO pilot um, in Limpopo this year slide. Um, slide please, Petra. In terms of the pilot, um, in, uh, also in, in January last year, um, I was able to attend the uh, first presidential meeting of African ministers at the UNWTO offices in Madrid. Um, there were 18 African and Middle Eastern countries that presented their Women in Tourism program. And of all 18 countries, South Africa was uh, selected by the UNWTO to host a pilot, which will be looking at the implementation of um, the, um, uh, the, the, the findings of, of the report and to, to test how well we are doing with respect to empowering women. The area chosen was the Limpopo area in the Vembe Mopani district. Um, the focus will be on the Robola and Rochelle to Kruger uh, art route areas. Um, and we will look at a number of community tourism and arts and craft projects and identify they need uh, to keep them sustainable and help them to scale up to become commercially viable. And we added subsequent to obviously the pandemic, uh, we are looking at the impact of COVID-19 as you indicated, Chair, women have been disproportionately uh, impacted by, uh, by this virus. The um, objectives of the pilot, we will look at obviously the objectives of our own program, Program: how well are we doing, what do we need to adjust or what do we need to, to uh, ramp up, identify key gaps in the pilot area with respect to achieving the objectives of our program, identify gaps with respect to the specific projects um, in the pilot area in terms of the action plan that I referenced earlier, and to create a basis for the department and key stakeholders to develop key policy strategy and interventions to address the gaps that we find. Um, the focus areas for the pilot will be on leadership and skills development, supply development, SME development and mentorship, and uh, the specific outcomes are market access, uh, job creation, transformation. Um, there are serious problems in, in, in terms of intergenerational challenges. For example, one of the pottery projects in the Limpopo area, uh, the older women are, are, are excellent at this but they're not finding younger people uh, to be able to to pass it down to and there are a lot of challenges around patriarchy in the area um, and uh, so we want to look at at that sharing lessons with women in tourism chapters across the country and then of course beyond because this is a UNWTO pilot uh, government NGO and private sector partnerships will be created and we will identify what policy interventions are required slide and the ge geographic area, as I've already indicated, is the Robola Art Route, as well as the Rashila to Kruger Route. Um, the seven projects that we will focus on are the Nahakwe Lodge, where there's a lot of training of youth and women from the surrounding communities. 
So Anani Textiles, Mukundini Pottery, a traditional cooking and homestays, the Baobab Guardianship Program, the Baleni Salt Harvesting, um, the Surule Pot of Beads, and then also tour operators and guides uh, in the area. Slide. I think that brings me to the end of our, our presentation, Chair, and if I may, hand over um, Petra, if we could put up the slides for the chapters. And the ladies in the chapter chairs will uh, present in order of the slides in the presentation. Thank you, Chairperson and Honourable Members. Thank you very much for the presentation. We will allow, as you have requested, the additional presentations to be done to amplify. Over to you, sisters and mothers. Let me be the first one. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Good morning to all members of the Portfolio Committee, my fellow Chairpersons of Women in Tourism chapters and official team members of the National Department of Tourism. Thank you, Chairperson, for applauding the role of women that women play in our industry. And let me say Happy Women's Month to all the ladies present here this morning. I think I'm going to be the first one to present. Petra, can you please go to the next slide? Hello? Next slide, Petra. Am I audible? Now, can you hear me? Because it seems yes. like I've yes, lost you are. You, you, you are audible, Am I madam. Audible? Yes. Okay. You can are. I can Petra please go to the next slide, Olimpopo? First slide, Petra. Oh, okay. Can you see, can you see okay. it now? Yes, I can see. Did you hear my first presentation? Yes, I did. Okay. From Limpopo, I'm going to give this presentation. And uh, uh, from Limpopo, our overall aim of our activities for the whole year of 2019 was to tap into the township and villages of the five districts of Limpopo. Why? Because we believe that this is where tourism is and we wanted to empower and uplift women in those areas. So the first event that we hosted was on the 29th of May 2019. It was an women empowerment event. The theme of the event was tourism through the eyes of an entrepreneur. This was held at Tiani Guest House in the Capricorn District. We wanted to cover all the five districts of Limpopo. And uh, on the 3rd of June, 2019, we had a meeting. It was the executive committee meeting together with the National Department of Tourism and our uh, uh, Provincial Department of Tourism leader. It was held at Hyann Guest House. And the aim here was to forge a good relationship between uh, women in tourism, National Department of Tourism, and Lidet. And it was on this day where Lidet confirmed that they were going to assist us in everything that we wanted as women in tourism Limpopo. On the 10th of June 2019, we had a strategic planning workshop for all for the EXCO members and all district coordinators. This was at Zanami Lodge because we wanted to uh, uh, plan, wanted to plan and put a plan of actions so that all the districts can be covered in terms of programs and activities. We moved to the 4th of July, 2019. 
and held an all empowerment event. The theme was our history, our culture in relation to our main 2019 theme of uh, 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 2019 theme. Our theme there was our history, our culture. We wanted to create uh, uh, the relationship between culture and history because we were tapping onto the villages and townships. This we held at Mutaletsi guest house and NDT and all the stakeholders like your municipalities leaders also attended this event. On the 29th of July, 2019, we had an event for all women uh, in, the, in, the, in the province. And our theme was women in tourism tapping into sustainable cultural and heritage tourism. As you can see from all our themes, we were concentrating on culture and heritage and sustainable tourism. We wanted our women in the townships, our women in the villages to know that whatever they are doing in tourism is, they should be able to know that this is also part of uh, the, the, the tourism businesses. And this was held at Bembe district at Njakanjaka community hall. On the 28th of August, 2019, we held an empowerment event workshop for all members and non-members. And our theme for the event was women in tourism overcoming barriers in tourism. Because we have realized that as women in tourism, we are experiencing a lot of challenges in the, in, when running our businesses. So it's on this day where we invited uh, uh, stakeholders who came and advised us on how to uh, solve our challenges that we are facing in the tourism industry. This was held in the Mopani district at Bapalaburwa Municipal Lapa. Next slide, Petra. On the 25th of September, 2019, we held another empowerment event under the theme tourism and jobs a better future future for all this was the theme for the overall uh, tourism month and i mean a uh, uh, heritage uh, month yes tourism month and it was held at bilabila multi-purpose center we were saying to our members in whatever we are doing as women in tourism we need to make sure that we create jobs and we tried by all means to invite our members who started small creating jobs and motivating those who are in the industry. On the 24th of October, 2019, we had an annual general meeting for all members. Our constitution, because we also have a constitution, indicates that we need to have an AGM once per year. And we held this on the 24th of uh, uh, October 2019 at Hyani Guest House. And all the stakeholders were invited and DT, Lidet, and local municipalities. That was during the day. And in the evening of the same day, we had a fundraising gala dinner at Tibeka Game Lodge, where all the stakeholders were also invited. And that's where we celebrated our uh, achievements and our stakeholders were also there and DT Meilin was there, Lumka, and all the municipal uh, uh, officials and Lidet. This is where we formally appointed the CEO of Limpopo Tourism Agency, Mesonto Ndofu, to be our patron because we have realized that as we are uh, doing what we are supposed to do. We need to have somebody who will be able to mentor us, who will be able to coach us now and then. That was 2019. That was the end of activities for 2019 because uh, we celebrated uh, closing on that day. And in January 2019, on the 29th, uh, of January, to, I mean, Geno 29th, January 2020, we had an EXCO and district coordinators meeting at Karibu Resort. This was a strategic planning meeting. We invited all the EXCO members and all the five district coordinators. 
And here we planned the way forward. We, we planned the year plan. We wanted to implement our uh, uh, programs effectively. And it was a two day event because it was on the 29th of January and the 30th of January. That was on the, uh, I mean, that was at Karibu Resort uh, in, in Zanin, not in Kulupane, in Zanin. And um, we, were, we were thinking that during 2020, we are going to start working and start uh, empowering our women effectively. Then on the 20th of March, 2020, we had a plenary meeting because we had signed an agreement with Prozef South Africa and our local municipality, Pulugwane municipality and Lidet. This is a project on digital uh, marketing for our members. So on this day, we were trying to plan on how we are going to advertise, how we are going to pl place tourism learners in our establishments. And we did everything there. The event were, or the program was supposed to start on the 1st of April, but due to coronavirus, everything came to a standstill. So those are our activities from March 2019, 2020 for, from Limpopo Women in Tourism. Thank you, Chairperson. Um, okay, okay, thank you very much. We can have the next presentation. If you can just follow like that until we are done. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Manzagas. Okay. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Um, good morning, Chairperson, um, and the honorable members of the Portfolio Committee and the fellow ladies from the Women in Tourism. Good morning. My name is Mandla Gaziskefile, and I represent the Eastern Cape um, Women in Tourism chapter. Just to give a brief overview of our members, we have a total membership of 108 members as a province. Uh, broken down in regional chapters of six, if I can just name them, we have a chapter in Port Elizabeth, East London, Oward Tambo District, Alfred Nzo, Joe Gabi, as well as Alwal North. In front of us is a listing of the events that took place last year. And um, if we look at them, the first one, which was the Business Development and Funding Opportunities Workshop. If, if we look into the breakdown of these events, we notice that um, some of the events were meant for networking events and some were meant to empower our women in tourism. So the very first one, which was held at Hemingway's Hotel in East London, it was an event where we invited a number of organizations in particular those organizations that support uh, businesses um, with regards to opportunities for women and not only just women, small businesses, as well as any funding opportunities. So we had the likes of your CEDAS, the IDC, we had our Provincial Tourism Authority there to share with us opportunities that they may have for women-owned businesses. Following that event, we, we've had a, a, a provincial executive committee meeting. We've also had our annual general meeting, which was also held, uh, hosted in East London at Regent Hotel. And over and above that, we've had a number of networking events in these um, uh, 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 regional chapters. So each chapter would host um, on a monthly basis, a networking event with the intention of, of just sharing ideas with ladies, providing a platform to network so that more business uh, dealings can be, con can be conducted at those networking events. Later in the year, we partnered with an organization called Journey. Journey, towards the end of last year, they were piloting a program as a recently launched um, information systems organization. Uh, the intention was to share with small businesses an opportunity 
for those businesses to market themselves um, on their information system um, so that any visitor that comes into South Africa, they can, be, they can access their businesses and be able to get opportunity. So Journey um, came down to our province and visited uh, three regions. They went to Umtata, um, as well as Port Elizabeth and East London, where they did a proper workshop, met with um, the, the business owners and demonstrated to them how to upload their uh, business information onto the system so that it can be available to the visitors into the country. We also hosted a year-end function towards the end of the year, and we had planned to have a social media workshop beginning of the year, but due to the uh, pandemic, we could not host that. However, planning plans are in place to continue with those workshops during um, the month of uh, September. Um, we'll be hosting a, a, a number of online uh, um, workshops where we will be educating our members on how to utilize the social media platforms in order to benefit their businesses. I must say, Jefferson, that we are getting a, a, a lot of good support from our provincial tourism agency and many of the programs that we do conduct, we do conduct them in partnership with the Provincial Tourism Authority together with the Provincial Economic Development Department. Thank you very much. The next lady can take over from me. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairperson of the Portfolio Committee. Greeting members of the Portfolio Committee, officials from National Department of Tourism, fellow chairpersons of provincial chapters. I greet you. And I'm Carol Nake from um, Mpumalanga, representing Mpumalanga, chairperson of Women in Tourism. Uh, on the 26th of July, 2019, we have an interim exco meeting, which it was held at Dinigo Kruger Lodge in Malos Park at Ngomazi, local municipality, where the National Department of Tourism was um, uh, invited. Because in Pumalanga, we didn't have the, the this, um, women in tourism. It was there, but it was not known. It was there, but people of Mpumalanga were not aware of it, most of them. And then on the 19th of August, 2019, we had an annual general meeting um, in Nilsbreit or Mbombela at um, uh, MTPA Auditorium uh, Center which the National Department was uh, there. The um, committee, it's where the, um, the committee or executive committee were um, uh, selected, where I was, be, I was one of the person who was chosen to be a chairperson of Women in Tourism of Mpumalanga. And the committee, was um, selected in that day. And then on the 21 of August, a membership a recruitment drive, it took place in uh, Ligwala Gwala FM. As a chairperson of Women in Tourism of Mpumalanga, I've requested the radio stations around Mpumalanga because we didn't have people of Mpumalanga, they didn't know about the women in tourism around uh, our area. So I've asked all the, the uh, radio station where they give us that platform to go and, 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 and recruit more members, more especially women. And also those who are in the business uh, running their establishment, which they were not, they didn't know about this, um, uh, tourism, women in tourism. 
So we're trying to get more members on the radio stations. On the 22 of August, it was also um, a marketing or recruiting more members from, from Rise FM, which is one of another um, a radio station in Pumalanga, we did get the lots of, of, of women which they were joining and they were paying. Now we have 43 paid up members through those drive of the uh, social media and radio um, stations which they're giving us the platform to recruit more members, uh, more especially women and youth. On the 13th, 13th of September, 2019, we were having um, the ex executive committee meeting at Belaboni, which it's in um, Emalahleni, where it was a, a committee, it was an executive committee where we, were, we went there to talk about the, uh, to open a business to have this uh, women in tourism, which it was. It, it must be formalized. It's where all the committee members were there. And then we open a company, we open bank account, and then we even give people if they want to join because now we have the, the banking details and then people who want to pay, now we have the account, account from the bank, which before there was, we didn't have a banking account and then since I took over as a chairperson of Women in Tourism of Mpumalanga, it's where now people know we have to join and then it's, it's official. Now we have a banking account which we give out to, to all the women which wants to join this uh, organization. On the uh, 30 of January, 2020. Again, it was a membership uh, recruitment drive and marketing. It's where also we are busy recruiting. From 2019 on September until now, we have 43 members, paid up members. And then it's where we are telling our fellow um, South Africans, our fellow Pumalanga women, that this, uh, if you are part of the women in tourism, you will gain more, you will get training, you'll get benefits as now. NEF, uh, and NEF is helping also on uh, funding. So we are telling those people out there that we do have a government which is there to support us. And then the thing also that our I will say yesterday I was also on Radio Guala Guala, which I was also telling people to, to join this um, women in tourism because there is some benefit. Government are there to help us, to support us. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm still there. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Oscar. Okay. Um I'm 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 loud and clear that side, guys. Hello. Yes, Oscar. Okay, thank you. Yes, let's proceed to the next uh, chapter. Next chapter, please. Western Cape. Okay, sorry, I did not unmute myself. It's Kathy Westerway. Good morning, um, yes, honorable, uh, honorable members. Proceed, my sister. You are welcome. No problem. It's very cold in, in Cape Town. Very, today. very cold in Cape Town. Yes, but we need the rain. So, yes, it's and a combination of that. two things. Yes, yes. we're very happy. Yes. 
Hanuman are uh, processor. Yes, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, everybody, and um, for giving us the opportunity to do this presentation. So, um, Western Cape chapter was um, really formed in 2015 already, but just as a network. But then when Maylene's team came on and they introduced the chapter to register as NGOs, we registered our chapter last year, March, um, under CPRO, opened our banking accounts and started to recruit our members. Um, unfortunately, we've only been working in Cape Town, but we're supposed to be doing the entire Western Cape, which we haven't had the chance to do yet because of all the administration that we had to do before the time and time ran out of us last year, but we were planning to do it this year, but because of the pandemic, um, it is not possible now. But we might be able to um, still meet online with our other um, um, prov um, province, provincial districts. Um, which we are planning to do after our AGM this year, which is at the end of August, our first AGM for um, the year 2020. So last year we managed after the registration and after recruiting some members, what we have, our programs that we put in place were social media and marketing training, which we had um, in July last year. Um, we were hosted by um, PRASA, Metro Rail Offices, and there we had a fantastic um, Facebook marketing training, as well as how to get marketing via South African Tourism website, which a lot of women didn't know, but it's because they haven't had the opportunity to go to Indaba, and at Indaba, um, South African Tourism introduced their opportunities for um, everybody that's in tourism to market on their, on their website. Um, it was well um, presented and lots of women went away with lots and lots of learning that day. And then we had in August last year for Women's Month, we had a fantastic um, Women's Day out in the Winelands. Um, we took our ladies by a train also sponsored by Metro Rail by a train to Clubbits, and there they got off, were met by buses, and then were taken to the um, to the to three different wine estates. We were split into groups, and um, every group um, went to all of the wine estates, and eventually we all met um, at the end of the day via the buses and drove back to Cape Town. It was a really good day. The women had lots of fun, drank lots of wine. <laughs> And, um, and, and there was lots of networking and lots of business done between the women as well as the, um, the wine estates that um, hosted us that day. Um, in October last year, we had um, financial training um, done by Sunlam, which was Sunlam and another couple of other sponsors. And they um, really taught the women how to be independent financially as a business, because lots of women tend to think that their business involves their family as well, which I think it's just natural for women um, to think that you have to include your family with everything, but there they were taught that because it's a business, they have to treat things separately. They family to their business, and that was also an, a fantastic learning experience for everybody, including myself. Uh, we went away with a lot of um, um, knowledge about how to treat our businesses um, going forward, as well as wills. Um, you know, you have a will for your family, but you also have to do a separate will for your business. And that was also very, very inspiring. And then um, 27th of November, that was our year end function. Um, we normally have our year end functions in November because you know in Cape Town, December, it's very, very busy with tourism already. So we had our year end function. It was hosted by Hirsch. You know, the lady that owns Hirsch, um, the, she is a, a, a real big 
women's a supporter. And so she um, put up her um, venue so that it can be hosted there. We had a fantastic um, uh, motivational speaker. And then the women just had lots of fun. We normally have a secret Santa where we um, share gifts before um, getting into the busy season. And that was also well accepted. We weren't supposed to have our AGM this year, March, and um, already had programs set out for the entire year this year. But again, because of the pandemic, everything came to a standstill. So now we're going to have a virtual AGM meeting at the end of August this year. That's Western Cape. We're also going to, as I said in the beginning, try to meet virtually with our different districts so that we can include the entire Western Cape and not just Cape Town. And that's Kathy um, Westwick's presentation from Western Cape chapter. Thank you. Good morning, honorable chair, honorable members and acting DTG. And to my fellow Imbogote, Nazana Bate, my name is Makosim Simango uh, from KZN. Our program starts on the 30th of January, 2019, where we held an executive meeting, uh, which was attended by the provincial um, officials at here at the NEST BNB up in Jackensburg. And from that meeting, we are able to come with the next programs, which are in line with the main focus that our members wanted us to focus on, which was digital literacy, professional development, market access, and product development. On the 28th of February, a, a capacity building workshop was held where the National Department of Tourism was in attendance, KZN's WIT members in EXCO. It was held in Garden Court, Umsanga, Durban, 8th of March, 2019. This is another market access opportunity that we gave to our women and um, in, to do them. The membership drive was done by the EXCO and some uh, was for market access for our members. This was held at the Durban ICC. And then on the 17th of April, 2019, our draft constitution was adopted. And we held that meeting at the TKZN offices where the EXCO was present as well with the department, provincial department. On the 1st to the 4th of May, another opportunity we provided for our members, market access um, opportunity was the Africa Travel in Daba. Um, this was mainly, we were mainly focusing on our crafters and homestay owners that are based in rural and township areas. And the thing about this opportunity was for them to go out, sell the products, market their businesses at the Indaba with the tourism product uh, um, market. And then on the 4th of May, uh, the Africa Travel in Daba, uh, where it was a gala dinner. The ESCO businesses sponsored transport and accommodation for our crafters. As you all know that uh, transport accommodation were, are the main issues and the main challenges that rural and township women have. So they were sponsored their accommodation members and transport. And the, the gala dinner was held, um, apologies for that, it was held at Umhlanga. And then on the 19th, it was the 20th of June, 2019. This was another membership drive opportunity where in partnership with the Tala Bank uh, for the Imbogoto Iazenzela Women in Sum uh, in Summit Workshop, we were able to do market drive at the Edumbe in Durban. On the 27th to the 29th of August at the African Tourism Leadership Forum, this was another market uh, uh, access opportunity for our members to exhibit their crafts. And for the youth members, some of them were guest speakers at some programs. This was held at Devon ICC. 
And then on the 6th of November was our AGM, which was in attendance with the department and all of our members. It was held in Numsang. On the 6th of De uh, December 2019, it was the Women in Tourism, Women uh, uh, WIE cleanup campaign, um, where our members went to attend that and uh, that op opening up in Howick Falls. Thank you, Honorable Chair, and everybody. Hello, good. Mama Hoa, hello, good day. Honorable members in the house. This is Mama Hoa Litaba here representing uh, the women in tourism in the Northern Cape. I greet you all, uh, my honorable members. Did I say that already? Yes. All right. Uh, as we can see on our program, the, our first uh, event was on the 19th of September. That's where we launched, uh, officially launched our chapter and the event was held in, in uh, Uppington at the Full Gospel uh, Church Hall. And then on that day, we used the, the, the day effectively also on the same day, uh, we had elections for the districts in the Northern Cape. And the reason for that was that uh, the Northern Cape is a vast uh, a, a province. So the towns and, uh, and are far from each other. So that's when we decided that we will uh, launch uh, the district committees. And then in the district, then uh, the committees will run the, the program and we'll arrange events and meetings, and uh, we, we will, all the districts will re then report to the provincial chapter. So that was done on the 19th of September, as we were also on that day celebrating the, the tourism month. And uh, on the 14th of November, we had the executive meeting, and that meeting was held at uh, in, in, in uh, was held in Kimberley at the Kaya Labantu Northern Cape uh, Tourism Offices. And at, at that meeting, that's where we discussed now the, the events uh, that happened in the different, different uh, district. And in that meeting then where we were to schedule the, 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 the general meeting, but unfortunately we couldn't get to that. But on the 5th of April, uh, we had to. We had a chance then to visit one of the districts, which was now the the JTG district, uh, where we had uh, we celebrated our uh, uh, women in uh, launch the launch of the JTG district, and uh, the event was held at the workshop uh, Kokasi, which is which is one of our a beautiful lady here, hardworking lady, uh, who's running this uh, very unique uh, product. So we we were there as the JTG district, then to to visit also other small businesses in in order to support and to hear the challenges that uh, uh, the small and upcoming uh, businesses are experiencing. And with that, uh, the program was for next to take us to the other district. But unfortunately, then we were disturbed due to the, the COVID um, a pandemic, but the, the program is still ongoing. Immediately after when we are ready to, to visit all the districts, and then we will do that. That is now the, the, the committee that will, uh, will do that. But all in all, we, we are on 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 the on the WhatsApp groups and uh, on on our on our Northern Cape uh, tourism uh, uh, group. That's where we engage with all the districts, and still we are keeping in touch to hear what 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 the new what the new products are coming up, and that's where we also recruit uh, our new members, 
And uh, of course, there are a lot of challenges with, with regards to the membership, uh, 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 our annual membership payments, but that will also, of course, come with time. But we are in progress and uh, we are hoping to visit all the district this, uh, sometime this year as, as soon as uh, we, are, we are over the, the pandemic. Thank you so much, honorable members. Good morning, um, Chairperson. Um, good morning to the Portfolio Committee members, um, officials from the NDT, and our fellow um, chairpersons. My name is Kosi Chobeka. I am the Deputy Chairperson for Northwest. Um, our chairperson is currently not feeling well, uh, Ms. Bufelo Nguenya. So I'm standing in for her. And I'll go through our programs and I'll start with what has happened in 2019 where we started with, uh, Maylene has mentioned the conference already. I'm not gonna go through that. Um, we did the tourism awareness tour that included um, in partnership with the Northwest University that happened in Room in the Northwest. And then we also did um, on the 10th of April, 2019, we had a graduation which was um, a, a course that we did with um, Northwest University as well, because we've got a memorandum of understanding with Northwest University to assist our members in terms of empowering them and uh, assisting them with further learning. And that happened in Makikeng um, at the Northwest University. And then on the 3rd of May, we had a, we were at Africa Travel in Daba, and then we were parading the Badona culture. Even though we were in Durban, we thought Northwest needs to be represented in the KZN area. So but the women um, wore their Badona culture, the where we were parading the whole area to, to acknowledge that women in the Northwest are in, in, in Durban. And we had about 20 women um, also exhibiting, as well as those that were sponsored by the department to come and see what happened in the, in the Africa travel in Daba. And then on the 12th of July, we had our annual general meeting at Tabale Haye Guest House in Rustenburg. And then we, on the 26th to the 27th of July, we had our fundraising hiking event because we believe that we need to be self-sustainable. So we try and do these events to raise funds. And then we sell tickets for people to, non-members as well as members to buy the tickets. And then on the 9th to the 11th of August, we had the Women's Day Camp which was a weekend camp happened in Mafiking uh, to encourage women to try and luxury. So we encourage a lot of our women to camp. Even this year in, in, in August, we did the camp again on the 7th to the 9th of August. And then the last one we did was the boat cruise in December, which was another, was another fundraising event. And then in February, 2020, we started off with the golf clinics. Golf clinics, we're encouraging um, our women to participate in golf as part of a networking session, because the more we network, because we're not only inviting women that are within the tourism sector, we believe that if we invite other women that are outside of the tourism sector, but can benefit our women in terms of opening up opportunities, because that's what we are here for as, as women in tourism, to open up those opportunities. And then, um, we happened to be in the COVID state, uh, other events that were supposed to happen didn't happen. However, we took the time as women in tourism to say, what is it that we can do during this time of COVID? Since we've done the social media campaigns through uh, training through uh, Northwest University, we then decided to let's um, do campaigns online as women in tourism. That's when we launched the social media campaign in terms of um, the impact um, of COVID. So that campaign ran uh, in April until the 20th of May uh, in our social media page, which is Northwest, it, it is called Women in Tourism, Bukonibu Pirima on social media. So you'll see the videos, we shot videos of, of ourselves being quiet and then sharing all these messages of how COVID has impacted our women. And then we're gonna run another campaign again of women showing what has happened and with the assistance that they got from the Tourism Relief Fund, how what has changed. Because we're encouraging our women to share uh, um, different um, opportunities as well as challenges that they face. So in the 20, on the 25th of May, we had a, a meeting with our MEC of DEDECT because the department has changed from only being a standalone department of tourism 
to now detect. So we had to engage and introduce, reintroduce women in tourism to the newly um, appointed MEC as well as the officials because they've changed the whole structure in terms of who is now looking after women in tourism. And that was done online since we were on COVID state. Uh, it was done on Microsoft Teams, but that was a good meeting because we had to map a way forward in terms of how we're going to do things going forward. And then during that time, we ran a radio campaign with UFM um, where we outlined what our plans are for women in tourism uh, during the tourism month, as well as um, now in um, women's month. And we ran a campaign because we, we realized that our women, our membership is currently 500 rand annually. And we realized that our women during this time are struggling, but they want to join because they are seeing what is currently happening and what we are doing and how we've been assisting other women to join in and assist them with application during this pandemic. So we then allowed our, we ran a campaign uh, as of uh, two days ago yesterday to say to our women, if you join within the month of August, this is our present to us. You join within this month and we allowing you to join for free. So from our normal uh, membership of 62, we currently now sitting at about 102 members. So that has helped a lot, but we're only giving them until the end of August to join for free because we need to assist them financially as well. That's, our, that's, that's the support we're giving them. And then um, our, our plan, since we've been having online meetings with our members, we now had scheduled plans that we're going to embark on during the tourism month, which is now in September. Um, one of those will be to assist our members in terms of compliance workshops because members are now going back to, to, to work. They are starting their businesses and restarting uh, to get new clients. So we need to assist. We're gonna have a compliance workshop um, for all the product owners. And then we're gonna have a tourism um, awareness tour that will be happening in Flexdop and Ikaheng, which is Dr. Kenneth Kawunda. And then we're going to have another um, activity, which is Mozi Village um, Experience, which is going to happen in September as well, the 18th to the 19th of September. And that will be in the villages uh, around Lerome and uh, uh, Murule. Because these campaigns, because we're focusing on the tourism month, that is rural development and how we're embarking and engaging our rural women, because we don't want to leave them behind. And we're engaging with Mahosi because we can't go to a village without engaging and where these women are driving or they are the drivers of economy in areas. So we have another um, campaign where we go to, going to have a um, a campaign in Tojani farm, a friendly farm where we're going to be doing hiking and then a, a high tea at the end of the hiking because in within the, the trail you find that there are indigenous plants that we, we as women we can allow the women to participate as well. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Greetings to the members of Portfolio Committee and greetings to all the chairpersons of the chapters. Greetings to everyone and happy Women's uh, Month. My name is Nolwandle Mashiane. I'm from the Free State. I'm standing in for the chairperson who was in hospital just discharged, so she couldn't make it. I'm a treasurer. Uh, myself and the deputy is not available. Um, <clears throat> I see I don't have enough slide here, but I will talk to you with what I've got. Um, our roadshow started in 2018. We, we did a lot of roadshows in 2018 uh, to all the districts of the Free State. And after that, on the 29th of, Ma of uh, March 18th, 2019, we had our, um, our launch. Ms. Uh, Broderick and Lung, Ms. Lunka were there, and then we advised that we need to register a, an NPO or NGO or something. So we decided on an NPO, which we did on 2019 after the, um, the launch. And after that, we registered a, 
we open a bank account so that the members can contribute their uh, membership fee. And we decided that um, we're going to start paying because people on the uh, 2019, they couldn't pay. Uh, most of them, um, only the committee mainly paid. And then we decided to give people some time so that from 2020, they start paying, which they did. And we've got a, a number of uh, members, but the paid one are lesser than the number that uh, we have in our database. But then um, mainly on 2019, we are just following up because in other provinces, uh, people are still lacking. Uh, mainly in the Mutewa district, which is where Bloemfontein is, is the one that is more active, but we are always assisting those members in other districts. And then on the 20, uh, on the 2nd of February this year, we had our AGM. And after, on the AGM, then we did also a year plan which um, unfortunately it didn't really happen because on the 28th of March, we were supposed to do a recruitment drive uh, in Velcom because we have low numbers there. So, and then on the, and then following that we'll have a gala dinner. Uh, our, we already spoke, we have spoken to APSA. APSA was going to be with us and then the STIA as well. And then we'll also invite the national uh, uh, department and the motivational speaker. It was going to be a weekend away, uh, the, the gala dinner in Kwakwa from the eighth, uh, the women, women's weekend from the eighth until the 10th. And, um, and then following that, we are going to do a flea market so that uh, women showcase their products and services. And we're going to do that uh, in, during tourism month. And then we also had a, in line a road show, which we are going to the universities and schools to recruit uh, and tell the young women there who are interested in tourism about ourselves and about wheat, what is it doing? And then, yeah, that, that was the plan uh, mainly for this year. And also we have no, uh, two uh, WhatsApp groups for the committee and for the entire member. Um, we communicate nevertheless. And I thank you, Chair. Um, Honourable Chairperson and members, um, it's Maylene Broderick again from the department. We have had some uh, uh, leadership challenges in the Gauteng chapter. It was the first chapter to come steaming out of the blocks, uh, but there has been some internal strife there, which we've uh, been diligently working on. And we will hold an AGM um, uh, within the next couple of months uh, to try and sort that out uh, and get everything running again. Um, but this is... Um, They've done a, a lot of work, um, and, and, but unfortunately have been beset by some internal challenges, um, and we are trying to work with them in sorting that out. Next slide, Petra. Um, I, I think uh, from, from all of the women in tourism, uh, at the, the front slide, the chair, Honorable Chair and Members, there was um, right at the beginning, Petra, it gives you an indication of all our chairpersons and the membership uh, per chapters, as we indicated, we just got the NPOs registered last year. And uh, I really want to thank all the, the ladies who are uh, spearheading the chapters out in the provinces in trying to, to get this going. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair and members. Petra. Hi, Petra. Uh, yes, Jay. Is there anybody from the department who wants to do an amplification? Impli to amplify, to add? No, you, it's just Mylene and, and Mada Tonki who's speaking on behalf of the women. They, they 
um, quite involved in it. And then Lunka was doing, um, giving all the support. Those are the only three people from the department. 